Hey everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, and today I'm going to be troubleshooting some things you may run into if you are pressing your own books. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please subscribe down in the bottom corner. I do appreciate it. I do put out regular content about the hobbies that I love the most. So now we are not doing a tutorial today on how to press books. Uh, we will be doing one of those in the future, but today we're going to be focusing on some of the stuff that you may already be encountering while you are pressing and how to troubleshoot some of those problems. This originally was going to be an entirely comprehensive video over pressing, cleaning, dry cleaning, but really there was just too much to cover. So I will be breaking this up into smaller segments. So make sure you hit that notifications bell so you can be notified when those other segments do come out. So today we're really going to be focusing on the pressing of the books, just a regular press. If you're just getting into pressing, this is probably going to be the things that you are running into on a consistent basis, the questions that you have, and maybe some of the issues that you're seeing whenever you're pressing, and these would be the causes of those. So first and foremost, we're going to start about dry cleaning. So dry cleaning is a great tool for any books. Um, I have tools listed down below that I will use in the dry cleaning process but there are limits to what dry cleaning can achieve. They're never going to take some marks off of a book with dry cleaning. And what I see a lot of times is people trying to dry clean spots that are not uh, going to benefit from being dry cleaned or taking it too far. Uh, generally speaking, I will use a cotton round, then an absorbing pad, and then I will take a white artist eraser to touch some areas up that are white only. Uh, if I can't get it with that, that's something that I'm going to leave for wet cleaning. And if you're not too wet cleaning at that point in time, don't try to make the round block fit in the square hole because it is going to damage that paper. What you'll see a lot of times is people over erasing, which will take the gloss off, especially on modern books, erasing in those white areas more than just a light erase will make it very dull. And when light shines on it, you'll be able to see those dull spots on there. Uh, or you'll end up lifting color in areas if you're going over it too much with an absorbing uh, sponge. Even if it's lightly, if you go over it too many times, it will pull color off of those areas. So just be cautious with that. Um, you, you can damage the books. Uh, and I do see it a lot of times where people have just been too aggressive with that dry cleaning on there. From there, let's go into stacking. So a lot of times I, I see a lot of different issues that come from the stacks that people are using. If you're not familiar with the expression, the stack is kind of what you put inside of the book and on top of the book before pressing the book to kind of give it that stack that is going to produce the best results. You want something firm underneath the cover for it to press against. You want something to protect the staple in the middle so it doesn't get pressed into all the pages throughout. And you want a buffer that's going to protect the cover from that heat source that you're looking at. So first and foremost, the thing I see probably more than anything else on here is that people are putting too rigid or too thick of a backer between the cover and the rest of the book. Now you want something firm there. Uh, I would recommend a 65 pound piece of paper. Anything thicker than a 65 pound piece of paper and you run the risk of starting to put an edge on that uh, cover that you're working on. So you'll press that down and since it doesn't go flush to where the staple is at because there's a natural bend to the book, you'll press an edge in there and if it's too much pressure, too much heat, any combination of those, you can actually put a color lift on there as well. So you have a nice white straight edge down the cover of the book. So you really want to avoid that. If you've got like a really deep crease that's permeating through the book, I'd recommend using copy paper behind the cover and then maybe copy paper every few pages for the first part of the book. So it's going to kind of give you a build uh, that is give you a thicker press surface, but it's spread out throughout the thing and not going to be concentrated on that one edge. So if you see those books out there that have that really firm edge right by the spine, a lot of times it's because it's already been pressed and somebody pressed it with either a backing board uh, behind it or possibly something even thicker at that point in time. Another one that I see a lot of times with backing boards, and there's some mixed feelings about this in the community, I'm sure I'll get some feedback on this one, is using nonstick paper as a buffer for the cover and your top backing board to protect it from the heat source. So I have seen people who use Teflon nonstick paper, which I highly, highly recommend against. While it is nonstick and will prevent any of the ink from lifting, uh, it will actually uh, can result in canvassing if the heat gets a little too hot on it. 
you're not familiar with the canvassing is that there's a pattern on that Teflon paper it will actually kind of burn or etch that into the cover of your book which is impossible to completely remove even if you can reduce its visibility uh, so absolutely avoid Teflon but even uh, if you're using something like a silicon release paper or SRP paper I don't like using them and I started using them I moved away from them for one reason and one reason alone like there it does not provide very much room for error if you are hydrating your book at all using humidity to help remove uh, some of those deep creases if you over humidify the book there will be extra moisture in that book SRP paper does not absorb moisture at all what it will do is it will actually trap that moisture in there can result in ripples in the SRP paper which then get pressed into your book uh, depending on the heat the time and all those different settings the ripples can be very 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 tiny and almost impossible to get out if that's the case what I will use a lot of times in place of that is another piece of copy paper over the top if it's a really heavily hydrated book maybe two pieces of copy paper over the top to help absorb some of that water and disperse it during the pressing effect but what it will do is it will actually allow that water to come in and out of the book if there is too much in there and not trap it in there now the trade-off for that is is that because it is absorbent it can color transfer on that front cover so if you are working with a really glossy cover if you are working with you know really bright vibrant colors that copy paper on top versus the srp paper can lift or stick to some of those covers so just be cautious in those situations again it's just a good rule of thumb throughout the process is start low on temperatures and work up to what you're you're comfortable with if it's a book you've never worked on before start more cautiously and then work up to something more aggressive versus starting maybe at the top end of that uh, from there we have pressure that's probably the hardest one to get specifics on uh, even if you watch some of the other professionals that are out there you know it's a touch kind of scenario now I will say this the easiest thing to remember is you are not flattening this book with pressure I think a lot of us grew up with you know baseball cards or Pokemon cards and when they get all crinkled up we'd stick them in a book and put everything in the house on top of that book to flatten that book with or flatten that card with all that pressure that is not what we're using we're using heat we're using humidity uh, we're using other surfaces as a backer to get out those creases the pressure really is there to hold the shape that we are encountering, which we'll get, touch back on here in a little bit when we talk about cold pressing. Um, so just keep that in mind. You want it to be flat. You want it to be even across the surface. You want there to be some amount of pressure on there, but you don't want to go overboard with the pressure. Too much pressure, you can pop the staples. You can actually stretch or sink the, or stretch the cover or sink the staples in. Uh, if you've ever seen that where the staples are inside and the cover on both sides is over the staple that's usually what comes from too much pressure where it's been pushing down and it just causes that book to kind of sandwich under all that pressure you want to avoid too much pressure but on the other side of that uh, if you go too light you can get uneven presses you can get waves in the book if it was not or if it was humidified beforehand so just be cautious with that too but again too little pressure you can fix by going back and repressing uh, with the correct amount of pressure too much pressure can cause permanent damage to the book so be very very cautious with that and again a good rule of thumb is just remember the pressure is not what is flattening the book it's the heat and it is the humidity that we're putting on to it talking about heat temperature is another big thing that we talk about i get a lot of questions probably more so than anything else is what temperature am i pressing my books at i will tell you that there is no 100% right answer. I know professionals who I trust implicitly for their information that have 15 to 20 degrees difference that they always press with. And I will tell you right now, I don't always press at a specific temperature either. It is a book by book basis. It is sometimes damage by damage basis. Uh, sometimes there is a really dull, thin crease in a book and I want to press it with heat for a long amount of time I'll drop the heat down sometimes I have a really glossy cover or a really vibrant color uh, cover and I don't want to be at that higher heat that I normally use because I know some of that color will transfer with the way that I have my stack set up so those variations are gonna be on there if you go too high the damp the, the the 
if you go too high, the trade-offs are much worse than if you're too low. Uh, if you're too high, you can, on a modern book, brick what they call brick a book, uh, which is basically all the ink on the modern pages will kind of liquefy and stick together to when where you open it up, the whole book is fused as a solid brick. Uh, just about completely ruins any book that you'll get a hold of. You can sometimes separate the pages if you're lucky. Uh, on older books, if you go too high on heat, the color, you're not going to fuse the pages on those newsprint, but the color will stick to your uh, surface that you're pressing with and you can lift all the col color off of that top cover. So your risks of too much heat are very, very high, too low of heat, and you're going to be pressing over and over and over again. I would say your ranges uh, on the very, very low end are probably 135, uh, minus some really special circumstances. And on your high end, probably about 165. It, you're going to have to learn your press though. A lot of presses can run a little hot from what their thermostat says. Some can run a little cold and some are just not real consistent. I see a lot of people who are buying presses off marketplace that may have been used for years and years and years for t-shirt presses or this, that, or the other and their temperature set thermostat may not be 100%, so just make sure you check it. Make sure you learn your machine before you ramp it up to those books that are gonna be really high pieces in your collection. And the last one is gonna be bring us to cold pressing, which may be one of the hottest button issues in the pressing community, pun intended. Uh, the art of cold pressing is basically twofold. You'll have people out here, there who are pressing books without any heat or humidity at all, uh, which is also cold pressing. And then you have people out there when they're talking about cold pressing where it's just leaving the book in a pressed state after applying heat to it. So I wanna address both of those. First one is the easiest one, which is cold pressing. Uh, as I stated earlier, pressure is not what is going to get the creases out of these books. Pressing without heat or humidity is never ever going to result in the same Pro, uh, per same result as pressing with those aspects. No, I don't care if you put it under a million tons of pressure. I don't care if it's there for a hundred years, it will never produce those results. You may get a flat book uh, from cold pressing for a ridiculous amount of time, but it will still have all the creases in it. It will still have all the indentations in it. It will never take those out. If anything, it'll push them through to further pages in the book because again, Pressure is not what is going to remove those aspects of the book. The heat uh, and moisture that we're putting through that the book is what's gonna loosen those fibers to let them be kind of molded back into the place where they're supposed to be at. And then that pressure is just gonna hold it all in place afterwards. Now, the second aspect of cold pressing, which is leaving the book in a press state after the hot press. So I will say the only definitive answer that I will, will go on record for saying is the book needs time to come back to a room temperature before you even think about touching that press at all, which is usually about two hours, give or take. So that is the bare minimum that I will say always needs to happen. If you take it out before the book has re returned to its original temperature, you're going to get curling on the book. You're gonna get waviness. You're gonna get a lot of reversion uh, in that aspect because the book is still trying to settle and you would be pulling it out before it has to settle. Now past that is where you open up a lot of discussion. There are a lot of people out there that are like of the mindset that that book needs to sit in that press untouched for at least 24 hours after the press has been put in. There are some who will take the book out of the press and then, then put it into a cold press and leave it there for 12, 24 plus hours like that. Uh, and there's, I will say this, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way here Cold pressing, you're never going to cold press it for too long. Now, if you are trying to do a large number of books or if you're trying to run a business doing this, obviously you're going to run into a lot of issues if you are cold pressing in your press for 24 hours every time you press a book. Now, my personal results are, there are books that I will leave in for 24 hours, usually based on the severity and the age of the book and kind of the age of the issue that I'm working on in that book. If there's a, a really old book that has just been beaten and neglected its whole life, and it's got creases uh, and bends all throughout that book, those are the kinds of things that I would leave in a cold press longer because those have been worked into those paper 
for longer. So if we talk about like paper memory, the paper has acquired that new shape for a long period of time and correcting that new shape is going to be a longer process than a short one. If I have a modern book that has some waviness in the front cover, I am not leaving that book in a cold press for 24 hours. That's probably gonna be a two hour uh, book. Let it go back to resting temperature and then take out. Now I will say this, I do not submit books immediately and I would recommend you do the same. I will always press a book to what I believe it's completion and then it will sit usually for a week to two weeks before I go back and re-examine the books to make sure there has not been any reversion. So if I did not sit in the cold press long enough, there's always an opportunity to go back and repress it so that you can address that. And then you know that it may need to sit in a cold press a little bit longer. So my advice to you is rather than sign up for 24 hours after every book, if you don't need to, if you've got all the time in the world, you're just pressing a book here and there, go for it. But if you are in a process where you're working through a large number of books, for whatever reason, I'd recommend evaluating the book on a case-by-case -case basis and then re-examining after it's had some time. And if it has reverted, going back and readdressing those issues. So those are some troubleshooting tips that I can give you for today. Make sure again, you have the notifications bell on so you can get to the next video when it comes out. If you have any questions of something I didn't address today in, relate, in relation to pressing, let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, guys, Hobby Hero, out.